Yeah, so far it's just dudes talking, but it also um, you're the the first one that's like a store person. So is it? But okay. then again, dudes dudes talking is a very valid format for me. Yep, sounds um, good. Yeah, and you know, I, I feel I feel like uh, dudes talking best describes our interaction so far. Yeah, just, just a couple of cool dudes, right? Ex yeah, exactly. Once you're cool enough, you get to open your own game store. It's like a level up in the nerd in the nerd. Exactly, uh, exactly. And then you become like the nerd king. You know, in your little area, and everyone's just like, "Oh man, that guy is the guy." Do you have a crown? I don't have a crown. Wow, okay. that's, that's a missed opportunity right there. But that, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. You, you know, you have time. You have time. You're still, you're I'm, still a young man. The crown still right. has. Uh... I mean, I do have a 3D printer, so I can probably make a crown. And okay, I feel I, like now, we're onto something. Said, when Leviathan came in, I did make a throne. So I, I did that for the one, uh, the eighth edition box, the dark Imperium, oh. the the yellow one. Yep. And then I was like, this can never be topped. And then I saw everybody else doing the, the throne thing. And I was like, I did a thing. Smart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was the hipster of throne yeah. boxes. <laughs> you, were the, you were the first, but not the last. Oh, for sure. For sure. Well, the boxes get bigger. So, like, the throne gets, like, mightier and mightier. Mine was, like, a tiny chair now. <laughs> <laughs> So you you are the, uh, the, the, the are you the founder of the Red Dragon Comics Cards and uh, Games? Yep, I am. Uh, uh, so I do have a business partner uh, um, who owns another store in Ottawa. And uh, essentially, I came to him saying, hey, I, I, I had another store. And I was like, I was looking at expanding out into Orleans. He said, well, I wanted to expand to Orleans. And I was like, well, maybe we just do this together. And then that's kind of how everything kind of went. Um, he, he does a couple hours a week in the store because he's running his other store. And then... I ended up moving um, from where I was in a small town called Brockville, about an uh, hour 45 minutes uh, into Orleans because everything was going so well. And now this is my main store that I work nonstop. And the other one I sold my stakes in and just go with this one now, which is yeah, I, I feel like a lot of people do that, right? You, you get the one and then you have to kind of maintain the one. Unless you decide really to go like the franchise kind of thing where you want to just branch out and open a bunch of location. Uh, I mean, for me... I got a, a little bit of an influx of uh, cash. Um, so my grandfather, before he passed, he wanted to gift everyone in the family a certain amount of money. And so uh, he saved up everything and was buying like down payments for houses and stuff. But because like, my house at the time was much cheaper than my cousin's, he's like, okay, here's a little bit of extra cash. And the gamble was either I put it in the business I know or I take a chance and go to a bigger city and see if I can make it work. So I think the gamble paid off based on where everything's going. Uh, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it has some, some rough days, you know, for sure. Uh, so we opened up in September, and then COVID happened. September of what? Oh, just before? Oh, your, your store was just before COVID. Uh-huh, yeah. So we oh, only my. got a couple months. We were just getting our, you know, our feet wet, starting to build up a little bit of stuff. Bam, COVID. Uh, um, and... I think that was kind of the defining point of my store is because I drove 8,000 kilometers in one week because I drove everywhere to make sure everyone had their stuff and dropped it off. Everyone was happy. Everyone's hobbying. They saw my dedication because I didn't want the business to go under. And then we made a discord and everyone started hanging out and then kind of the rest kind of built from there. That is, that is very cool. I thought you, I thought it was like much older than this uh, as, as a store. So, you, but you've really uh, taken the Ottawa scene by storm, or was was the, the was the scene already there, and then you kind of just got got like lucky, or or the dedication paid off, or did you build it really uh, with, um, with just like? Elbow I think boots? it was a. I I definitely would say there's a lot of hard work, uh, but there was definitely a little bit of like a little bit of luck and just knowing the right people to begin with. Um, so where my previous store was, I'd met uh, a couple members of Team Canada. So Chris Haynes, for example, I became kind of his local store. So I partnered up with Canhammer. Um, I was able to get them some discounts for a couple of events that they run, Capital City Bloodbath and Canhammer Team Tournaments. So they started getting prizing from me. So that kind of got my foot in the door to introduce me to a few people. So when I walked up to Ottawa, I wasn't completely blind. Yeah, well, it was I a new that. location, but not you were not completely new to the... Yeah, but at the same time, like, I would host events, and I'd have trouble getting 10 to 12 people in, so, like, it was a bit much, but then there was a little bit of luck with, 
uh, trying to get some events, and the Can Hammer guys, I think just due to general life stuff, I think Chris had uh, had another child at the time, and he was busy, and so they used to run an event called Power Fists and Psychers. Not having the time, they said, hey, Dan, how about you run that? So I had an established event name, even if it was only twice a year, and now I can start running this once or twice, uh, or what, sorry, once every month or two, um, and kind of build from there, right? So it gave me a little bit of footing to kind of work off of, uh, and a little bit of a branding already. And then afterwards, I think COVID, as terrifying as it was, it forced me to just put in all that elbow grease and then, then build up from there, right? Yeah, so. it was that, that was a, a lot of a big turning points for a lot of store, either like closing, doubling down, or like changing. I, I think we saw like three or like opening. A lot of people open uh, new stores, you know, like, oh, well, the one that's here is dying. We'll open up a new location right after COVID. So it's, they're really... You see all three types of like, we're gonna like stick to what we're doing and hang tight. We're gonna change drastically, or you know, hey, we're brand new. Look, post pandemic, we can do this. So it's yeah. it's uh, it's it, but it, but it it was it was rough for everybody. But one thing I noticed, I don't know if you felt that way uh, too, was like a lot of people turned got back into Warhammer because like painting minis is a very like. Uh, It's a, it's a very easy process when you're locked up inside, right? It's a it's a lockdown oh, yeah. like prime obby. Yeah, uh, there was a gentleman. Uh, he owns a paintball, like indoor paintball, and uh, when he closed down, he obviously couldn't do that. So he bought some models. Uh, I believe it was just Death Guard and Marines, and learned to paint off Games Workshop. Looked stunning, like identical to box art. As soon as COVID kind of finishes, he's like, "All right, I don't want it," and just gave it to us to sell in our used models. And I was like, "What?" He's like, yeah, I got my fun out of it. I got to go back to work. That was it. So, like, I think he is just, like, kind of par for the course. You know, there's a lot of people that started doing that. A lot of people started building new armies and getting stuff ready. Then when lockdowns lift, everyone's like, hey, I got three armies I've been painting. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> for yeah. sure. Oh, for sure. Like the, and the demand for events, because you, you have, uh, as you said, uh, you, you inherited a bunch of events, but you also started running bigger and bigger events, right? Yeah, so I think, um, and I mean, Chris would have to correct me on this this one because I did, I helped them with the last two Power Fists and Psychers, and I think they were like three or four round tournaments, one day, maybe 20 to 24 people. And like that, that's, that's, that's about right. I looked at I looked at a couple yeah. and that's about right. Yeah, so they were running those like every, I'd say like twice a year, plus their two bigger ones. And I've, I've now been able to grow that um, so I can do a monthly event that size um still have people on the waiting list so i have a gt coming up this weekend actually so it'll be two days five rounds uh i've got 30 people and i've got a wait list of about another 20 people i just don't have the space yeah uh, um so you know and that's kind of where we're at right now i don't know with event spaces in ottawa um are quite expensive so i can't feasibly purchase and say we're gonna have a 200 ticket but when i can do it in store it's like a 75 ticket for the weekend everyone eats it up right and i constantly selling out of all of these events so i can do it every month and we got some good players <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah a couple of big names you dropped out <laughs> you dropped there so and, and yep. just to just to sorry to touch on something so you have 20 people events inside your store uh yeah so this weekend i have uh, a 30 man event uh and that's going to be hosted inside my store so the store that's itself has enough for 15 tables Plus, I can still hold another 30 to 36 person card tournament as well. So I'm going to at have the same time. Space. Yeah, at the same time. Ooh. Ooh, that yeah, is very, sorry. very good. And and then, well, speaking of speaking of cards, what's your uh, in terms of the store? What's the where's the balance between like let's say your 40k or your miniature event and your uh, card events? Do you do Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh, Flesh and Blood, probably? Uh, yep, we do all of those. We're looking at doing some Pokemon. Uh, Pokemon. Um, Over COVID became a very hot collectible. Uh, I'm sure if you've been doing the hobby store, you know everyone's kind of got to collect them all. Um, problem is we can never get enough cards to actually run events for them because everyone's picking them up to sell them on eBay and things yeah. like that. So uh, we just can't get the supply in to actually run the events. Uh, a new card game, Lorcana, being the same. I can't really run events if I can't get the cards for it. So right now we're just selling it, but I am looking at getting events at some point in the future once products are actually rolling in smoothly. Um, but right now, yeah, we do Magic three or four days a week, depending uh, on different events. We do Yu-Gi-Oh! twice a week, and, 
mentioned. We do Flesh and Blood once a week. We do all sorts of pre-releases and everything else. So I'd say it's a good split. Uh, we also do a lot of other tabletop games. So we got Age of Sigmar, which uh, I've noticed on the Ontario side is not nearly as big as the Quebec side. Uh, I don't know if you. Oh noticed. yeah, Quebec. Quebec is wild for Age of Sigmar. The tournaments are yeah. like are. Well, the, your your forty k the forty k events that you describe is what Age of Sigmar is in Quebec City. The the yeah. Age of Sigmar oh. crowd is amazing. Yeah, so we're trying to build our AOS to be something like that, but we're still struggling compared to our forty k of getting the people in. But we're slowly building that up. Uh, we also have a very large X wing community, about thirty players every two months. Uh, um, and Shatterpoint. Uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol, we have about 24 people. We do this every second month, uh, uh, rotating with another store in Montreal, uh, Abyss. Yeah. So we try, we try to work with them. So basically they'll run Crisis Protocol, we'll run uh, Star Wars Shatterpoint, and then we alternate. That way people who play, they go to our store, go to their store sort of thing. It's good for everyone. Yeah, and you don't try to like steal steal, steal the, 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 the scene, right, from one another. like. A... Exactly. So, so essentially we got one group of guys that, once per month they play at our store. Once per month they play at their store. Our guys go to them and vice versa. So, because uh, where we are in Ottawa, we're about an hour and a half, hour and forty-five to Montreal. So it's like it's it's not a bad drive for those in Canada. Uh, an hour and a half is kind of like oh, that's actually a reasonable drive, right? Um, so yeah, it's been going pretty good with with that stuff. Um, we've also looked into this, like we got some Dungeons and Dragons nights and stuff like that. A little bit of everything, to be honest. How do you work your uh, Dungeons and Dragon night? Do you do uh, like private room situation, or is it like free? Free everybody come and then we'll we'll figure it out. Or so we actually have a Discord, uh, which I'll so I'll sidetrack into that a little bit. Um, so during COVID, actually, this was another thing that we found really well is that we started a Discord. Uh, my daughter really pushed me for this. Um, well, we're now over a thousand people on our Discord. Um, which puts us as the fourth largest in all of Ottawa. So the only ones that are bigger than us is the two uh, Ottawa University, Carleton University, and the city of Ottawa's own themselves, and we are number four. That's uh, uh... Um, which which is pretty impressive. Uh, and we have a big D and D meetup section in there. So then people just kind of come up and meet up. Um, and we've been using this as a good leverage tool of people coming in saying, "Hey, you want to meet the community?" Uh, there's something that's a little bit less intimidating to jump on Discord, meet people. You might not put a face to them, but now you know them. And when you come into your for your your local game night, you're like, oh, I'm gonna come in Wednesday for playing Age of Sigmar. And you're like, well, I kind of know everybody. I just don't know the faces, but I know how to interact. So you get that safety net of kind of like not walking into the store with 30 people and getting intimidated. And uh, that's been very good for us. That's, that, well, yeah, no, no doubt. And, and like getting an active Discord, I think is uh, what something that a lot of like stores struggle with, especially like the. Uh, like the, the older generation, like people that don't have like a daughter that will like manage the discord for them. I think that's a lot of stores struggle with that. So it's really cool to see you strive and build like your business around it. Cause I'm assuming your your most of your, uh, social media goes through the discord over any other type of like platform. Uh, yeah. So we have a link that basically when we post something on Facebook, it'll automatically post on Instagram cause they're owned together, but it'll also post that stuff automatically into our discord. So it's like one post hits everything. Yeah. Um, which is pretty pretty useful, um, but we've yeah we did a lot of stuff during COVID when we were in lockdowns as well, like trivia contests and painting contests and stuff just to keep the community alive. And now we've got this like there's the store community and there's the off online Discord community are almost two different communities. It's like having two different stores. Oh, exactly. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, and uh, I mean I, yourself, you also use Discord, and it just, it's nice to have a lot of people to hang out with and talk especially a game like Warhammer 40k. Uh, there's a lot of rules interactions and armies and painting and lore. And we got people that just like the lore. They just like reading books and the lore while they have people to talk to, you know? So it's, uh, it, yeah, it's really eye-opening to see how many people are really involved. Even if at the store you only have 40 people, there's a thousand people a week that rotate through just walking and picking up a paint pot. Well, now they're all involved. They're part of that community. But also you have a you have an online store, right? So online people are just as good business. They, they, yep. they just don't... They're not like foot traffic, but they're money uh, anyway, right? Yeah, exactly. But I, I, I think we got a, a pretty good foothold into a bunch of different communities. We got, actually got a, a lot of people. Um, you know, I know, both of us are part of the WTC, so we we know a lot of the, the international scene as well. Uh, there's a lot of them that actually join into our Discord just to kind of hang out and see what's going on. So um, uh, I'll give a plug for my bro uh, Jeremy on his stat check Discord, yeah, sure. but. Uh, you know, uh, his Discord, there's a lot of people there that now know me, and I've done some sponsorships and stuff with them. A lot of their guys have actually signed up onto our 
Discord and kind of hang out there, and they're just a little bit jealous because of how awesome the community is there. They're like a thousand people. Like, this is this is crazy. There's always somebody to talk to about stuff, and they're like, this is better than what I have in my city, sort of, sort of thing. And I'm like, well, I guess we're doing something right then, right? Yeah, I heard I heard the tales of uh, Kira coming in from the Maritimes and not wanting to leave your store uh, yeah. until it was forcibly <laughs> removed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a that was a good weekend. We had to get some practice in, but yeah. There's a lot of that. Um, Jer Jeremy as well. He went into uh, Saskatchewan for a tournament, and, and so I gave some store credit. Just I was like, yeah, it's a four-man team tournament. I'll give a little store credit for the winners. So they get like 125 bucks each. Um, the guys come back to me and like, hey, what do you guys have? Do you have, uh, in this case, like a World Eaters 8-bound? I'm like, oh, yeah, don't worry. I got like 40 boxes of them. Take a picture of my wall, and they're like, <laughs> I have to come to Ottawa now. And I'm like, yeah, there we go. So, yeah. Oh yeah, what one of the pictures you shared was a very like grown up and like store owner thing for me. The the custom made shelves uh, that hit like a lot of like trigger yeah. points for me of like seeing that I was like, oh this is this is nobody will understand this, but mm, this is beautiful to see. <laughs> the um, yeah, that's uh, that's one of our regulars. He loves coming to the store. Um, a lot of people might know him, Andrew Weber. Uh, he used to play a lot. He's part of the team um, of Can Hammer and stuff. He's retired now and decided he wanted to help us out by just building some shelves. So I was like. Absolutely. We play uh, some some Blood Bowl soon. We're going to be playing some Blood Bowl with him. So, yeah, he's, he's kind of well-known in the community. He oh, he's, he's a great dude. Anymore. And he's, he's been around, yeah. like, since, since like since forever. I mean, I... yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, old, old school Warhammer fantasy player, right? So, yeah, he built all those shelves, custom built them all and everything else like that for us. Um, our custom tables and everything. There's a lot of thought going into it. Uh, you know, when you're playing Warhammer, to have things just like an extra half a foot to a foot higher so much less yeah the ra the raised table is what sets apart like the warhammer store from the game stores that also do warhammer really like there's yeah. no there's no substitute for the ra the raised table that are the the proper like uh width i guess or length yeah. whatever, whatever size you want to play on but it's that that's such a big deal of getting them correctly and it it's all the difference in the world i've i've, I've noticed that and i've noticed people common thing about that and every time they go to somewhere that, do, that don't have them they comment about it they go somewhere that have them they comment about it for sure exactly especially after you played a bunch of rounds uh in a tournament you're like oh my back is sore from li bending over you raise those tables up a little bit there's no back pain people just it's the tiny things like that that everyone recognizes yeah. so every time we get a little chance to make a tiny little quality of life upgrade for our guys we do that and then when new players come in they go Oh my God! You have all of these little quality of life upgrades, and they really notice it, right? And then they ne never want to leave. But so speaking of uh, quality of life things, how do you do? You have a bar? Do you have food? Do you have coffee shop? What's do you have like a, a like a side business inside your uh, your little business there? Um, so we were looking at doing a, a bit of a cafe um, sort of idea. It just it's not as feasible because of the size of the store for what we're doing for the cards and the game tables currently. Uh, um, and one of the big things that we're looking at because we opened up just before COVID is that we have a five year lease and that's actually running up in August. So we can stay there, but I really would like to move to a bigger location. So ideally I got a couple of places in mind. I've been in some contact with people, but we're going to be moving on this a little bit more in like the March area after holidays and stuff like that. We'll take a look at some places, but my dream is to get something that two or three times the size. And that way I can have like, 60 man tournaments in store uh, um and then we can have like a little bit more of a cafe with a bar and that kind of stuff in there at the moment it's not there but i think that would be a very good thing uh to add in currently we just need tables for people like we have a wednesday night and we're sold out we don't have any room for anybody i need more space for card tables so right now they take priority right Yeah, that was kind of my next question. How do you juggle like dead nights on like a bigger rent? Because I, I know that used to drive me crazy. My previous location had like more. It was built as a card shop, really, and then it kind of uh, turned into a Warhammer shop. But but the 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 dead like the dead space uh, really bothered me when like a you know like a on a Monday morning or whatever Monday evening there's nobody uh, anywhere, and it kind of like drove me mad to get like all that downtime with the tables. So how do you manage that with like a, a, a gigantic location? Um, just don't have dead time. <laughs> <laughs> you just fill up the tables costly. Uh, I don't know. It's uh, yeah, it's a bit of a juggle because we caught, we try to run a lot of smaller games. So like, for example, Wednesday, um, we managed to have Kill Team, Warcry, Age of Sigmar, Magic the Gathering Legacy format, and Flesh and Blood, but they each take up a little section, and we're just packed, right? Like there's there's yeah, because no they all, all the sections are. 
intertwined exactly. together. So. so we have a lot of small communities, and because there's only so many days in a week, we kind of stick everyone in. 40K is huge. It needs its own night. And there's a couple nights of the week where, like, okay, maybe a snowstorm and it's quiet. So I think this week was Black Friday. Saturday night was pretty quiet. We just had some people playing Commander. It's not the greatest, but then you look at the sales because you're doing online on Black Friday. You're like, yeah, everyone spent their money on Friday. It makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Um, right? So uh, most of the time, it's not too bad. We usually have lots of people playing in there. Um, I also try to schedule a lot of things like league play. So we have a Warhammer 40k league that we run. Every three weeks, you get a new opponent. So you got to schedule your own games. So most of those people are just like, hey, we have tables. Every once in a while, you're like, boom, there's like 30 people playing. They're all playing their league games. No, no way to communicate with each other, but they just come in and play their games. Uh, we're looking at doing a Blood Bowl League, same thing. One game every two weeks. It just kind of fills the gaps where everyone has to get that one game in. They're going to try to find the dead knight, and then all of a sudden, it's half full, right? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah it, so. it, it, makes, it makes a lot of sense. I'm always, I'm always just curious as to the solution uh, that, 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 you know, like uh, game stores take. Because everybody has like a different model. Is your, uh, is, is your uh, play space... Uh, free for all basically or you, is it always like a pay for uh like let's say you have your commander night is it like ten dollars per person to play in it or is it just we play commander tonight or no everything's free free table free tables all the time so that's one of the things that uh was definitely discussed early on do we charge for tables uh table space or not uh there was another store that had tried charging for table space and we decided to go with a bigger play space to make sure everyone had room and never charge so uh my customers come in they buy their we'll say warhammer they're buying their warhammer the least i can do is offer them a good gaming space but we also know that if they're playing in my store they're more likely to buy stuff so it's 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 good for me and it's good for them right yeah they're gonna come in they're gonna buy the paint they're gonna buy the pop while they're there they're gonna do that stuff because i provide a good game space but i never charge for it um same with a commander for my magic knights um I don't do anything for Commander. When we do um, modern format or Yu-Gi-Oh, five dollars goes in. It all goes back to store prizes, um, whether it's booster. Yeah, pack as, as or, a, t a tournament structure, basically. Of uh... you usually get yeah, exactly. You usually get store credit back. They put forty bucks in, they get forty bucks out. Like that's the the general rule of thumb. I don't want to make the money off of the table space. They usually like the space enough that they end up buying something there, anyways. Uh, and and I feel like that's that's kind of the the, the classic mo model uh, as well. I'm I'm always again, always curious to see what what other people do and because uh, a lot of people find like they really um, they really enjoy like the the premium experience of, of but yours is more of a general public because you you see the the, the two uh, the two models I feel like for table space where it's a a very premium uh, place and then you pay for it or it's like take all comers and you. Know, Yeah, and what I like, what I think I'm trying to do is try to offer the premium experience, but in a different way. Yeah. Uh, um, so I'm still trying to give them the premium tables, premium terrain, but I also don't charge them. Um, and so this is one of the things, again, going back to the Jeremy's stat check, we were talking about someone who was running a different store. And in this case, it came up uh, buying cards in store. So I don't know if you ever had like two customers. Customer A wants to buy a card off customer B. Oh, yeah. They want to do it in store, right? There's, yeah. Uh, so when, before I had my store, a lot of places uh, would say, oh, you can't do that in store. And my policy is I would rather have my customers safe and not get mugged, so please do it in the store. And so I kind of broke the rules with that, right? And a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, then I'm just gonna, you're going to lose money on that stuff. I'm like, no. Usually they're pretty chill. They like it, and they spend $5 on drinks or packs or something. Like, they're going to spend it anyways. They buy the card off someone else. The guy just got $5. He spends that $5 in the store, and everyone's happy, and everyone's safe. And it's actually kind of created this weird environment where every other store always has these hard rules because they want to make every single cent, and I don't care about it. Now people feel comfortable. They spend more money, actually, in my store because I don't care about getting every single penny. I, th I think that's that's one thing. Of like Until you meet that one person, that, like, that rule is there for one person into every store, I feel like. Every, every store has that one rule of, like, This one asshole is not gonna like ruin my day, like because the back the yeah. backpack trader is like is like it's a real deal and like good for you if you don't have it and, and like if you don't enforce this policy and don't have that kind of like crowd, but like I've I've seen stores of like not enforcing this and having like five dudes like 
trading in more cards and they traded the store while they're like sitting down between rounds of Friday Night Magic. And I, I would just like watch that, watch them go and go like, this is kind of weird for every, yeah, like I, everybody involved. It is. I've seen a little bit of it. I say with more of our Yu-Gi-Oh side of stuff than I with the Magic side. But doing the quick math on it, uh, if I lose 10% of my single sales in a night, I usually am still ahead by 20% because the other guys are more likely to buy stuff. And they're more likely to play in my tournaments if they have the cards. If I don't have the cards, they can't play in the tournament, they're actually going to go to my competition. At yeah, and, and that's, that's much worse card. than the backpack dealer. Uh... Exactly. So it, it maybe it's a gamble uh, on my side, and it's not necessarily going to work for every single person. But so far, it's worked out pretty well for me. Most of my guys, they like me. They just want to build their decks. If they can get their decks, then they're going to want to play in the store. If they play in the store, they're paying for the entry and... Once one person buys a pack on new release day, everyone gets caught up in that, oh, I need to get a card, I'm going to buy a pack, and it just oh, yeah. snowballs. Bo right? Yeah, so. I've sold boxes because somebody wanted one card out of the, the thing. Like, I'll just, I'll just get a box. I'll, I'll be sure to get it, you know? It, exactly. And so I think by having a more chill, relaxed environment actually makes me more sales in the long run. I lose out 10% day one, but by the end of the month, I'm up 20%. So it seems to be working fairly well. I'm pretty clear with my guys, too. Uh, I, I think they're nice. I'm friendly with them, but they are on camera. So yeah. if you're going to do something, <laughs> I do have you on camera. If you're going to sell a fake dual end to a Magic player and you get caught by it, we got records for the police. Like We're going to have words. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, so there was actually a, a series of break-ins about three months ago. We're in like a little strip mall. Um, they broke into every store except us. So they just they, they hit the barber, they hit the pizza shop, they hit the the hairstylist, they they just skipped us. And so no right, idea and, why. And I'm just like, okay, cool. So like I I just feel like that's kind of the power for the course. I've seen other stores getting robbed. Nobody ever touches us. I think we're just well liked. I mean, and and this is so weird. Like between us girls, this is so weird. Like a pizza shop, a barber shop, and then a whatever else the third one you said versus like game like game products that are like. One of them yeah. is like one of them is not like the others. Like the, yeah, the one stealable of the, value is like the one that did not get robbed is all there. Yeah, I know. And just I, the, I don't know. I just came in one morning and they're boarding. They're boarding up all the windows. They smashed them. They grabbed the tills. They ran out. Wow. I mean, like these. Most times, these kind of stores like mine do end up getting robbed. They want stuff, but I'm like, I got cameras. I got bars and everything else. Nothing happened. And I'm like, okay. I got there. There was one one crook here in town. Like a couple. This is a couple of years ago. Uh, and the, the guy, you know, the kind of guy that like if he shakes your hand, you have to count your fingers again. Oh, um, <laughs> at the, and he stole from every single game store except the one I was in. And like yeah. I, can, I can't prove that it was because it was because of me, but like I'm pretty sure it's good. It's because of me. And I was like, well, yeah, honor among Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a, a, a what's it saying like you don't you don't shit where you eat and it's like these are the people that want to play in your store they yeah. kind of like your store so they're just not going to mess with you they're going to mess with the other stores that they don't really care about so I'd rather have people liking me and apparently they like me so I'm just going to not yeah not don't, don't, don't fuck it up system. don't fuck it up now <laughs> exactly exactly don't mess with the sauce the sauce is good don't mess with the sauce <laughs> and then just one last maybe uh one one last question I had that I'm always curious about with game store owners. So you you we've talked about this. You are more of a 40k uh, person. How's your uh, interest in the, these other games? Like, do you play Magic? Do you play Yu-Gi-Oh yourself? Um, so I've dabbled in almost everything. Uh, last night, for example, we were myself and a couple of buddies. We were playing Commander at the store. Let it close down. We were just watching hockey and playing Commander in the store. So, uh, so I'd say I definitely like my Commander, and I definitely like my 40k. Um, and I play a little bit of everything. Like, I'm going to be doing our little Blood Bowl dig. I play some Shatterpoint, some Crisis Protocol. Uh, big Dungeons & Dungeons and Dragons fan. But as the store owner, I have to be kind of a jack-of-all-trades. Like, I have to know all the games. Not yeah. just to sell them, but if realistically somebody wants to play and they need four people to run Dungeons & Dragons and they only have two, I can say myself and my employee will jump in. Now you have four. Now the game actually works. So I kind of need to know everything. Uh, it gets expensive to have all of those kind of hobbies, and I prefer 40k is my my favorite for sure. That being said, I do enjoy playing a bunch of different games, different variety. Um, some of the 40k guys are astounded, just like 
how do you keep so many rule sets in your head? And I'm like, the trick is to be bad at all of them. Yeah. <laughs> 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 tactical lo- tactical losing, you know. So it, it's exactly. not obvious, but you're you clearly gonna lose. It's not you obvious. Talk with, com- talk with confidence, yeah. and they just go, "I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm here." Um, yeah. So I like a lot of the different games. I like a lot of our different groups, and I'll go through phases. Like I've played some Yu-Gi-Oh over the years. It's going healthy. I got a guy. He's literally the back of his uh, work shirt says Yu-Gi-Oh guy. Good. I'll let you deal with the Yu-Gi-Oh. I'll focus on the 40k. And how? Yeah, because uh, how many how many employees is your uh, is is your uh, thing going on going on? Like f- floor people, maybe. Assuming you do floor uh, as well. Yeah. So we got one, two, three. So we've got six staff right now. We just hired uh, number six. Um, as working out, uh, some of them are part time, depending. They're working different jobs. One guy that we just hired. He's going to be working as a bank teller soon, but it's part time hours. So we're filling in for the other part time hours. Um, and the next goal, because these guys work so hard, I've got them all on salaries and I'm trying to get them from minimum wage up to living wages. So the goal is in the next six months, bring them from, I think our minimum wage is about 1650. I want to bring them up to $25 an hour. So that's the goal is bigger store and bring them up to living wages. And they really work hard. You know, these are I mean, yeah. core members, of, right? And I want to treat them well and make sure that they're they're eating well and uh, able to actually survive and not just go paycheck to paycheck. A hundred percent, especially because you, you, you are probably like quality people, not just like any bum off the street. Like, you know, it, exactly. you, you need competent think, people or motivated people for sure. Yeah. And we treat it like a family, right? So if you're part of the family, then we're going to treat you well. If you're having a bad day, we want to see how we can help you out. Uh, um, you know, uh, one of our employees has some kids and if one of them has to go to the hospital for whatever reason, I want to make sure that I have quality staff and step in and take over anything. And we're just like, Hey, you need some downtime for mental health. Take it. You know, you got, you're sick, take it, whatever you got to do, do it. And if you guys are happy, you're going to bring that vibe in the store. And then everyone else sees the vibe in the store. They're happy. And it just kind of snowballs from there. Right. So oh, for, just yeah, try to keep sure. a nice positive environment. If you get one employee that's complaining nonstop, it'll snowball out. into. The right, so it will snowball to your other employees and to your clients as well. Like other patrons will notice like if, People are always miserable at your store. It's it, exactly, and then, and then God forbid. But if if 40K was not so big, or again, God forbid that another location opens up across the street and they're 40K only all the time, would you still want to run the game store, even though your main like your main thing was like was like not working out for you, or would that be just like kind of too much out of um, out well, of your range? I mean. Before I was doing this, I actually was working as a chef, and that's a nightmare. So I'd probably stick with this. <laughs> it's long hours, uh, especially in the summer, doing 60-hour weeks, and I just don't think I have it in me as, uh, you know, 15 years ago. when I was Yeah, as not everything. somebody that's 30 years old, yes. C- yeah, correct. Ex- exactly. Yeah, exactly. We, we do enough stuff that, like, if some, one slows down, example, like 10th edition happened for, for Warhammer, and all of a sudden there's the Eldar meta and people don't want to play. Yeah. That's fine. Magic card doing well, right? And like we have something else to go on it. Um, and then we shift into less games, more painting, more hobby side of stuff. Um, which is a great thing about the hobby is that you can always swap between the the narrative side of stuff and the ta- the like the actual competitive side of stuff and the hobby thing. So it's a pretty wide uh, thing. But, uh, you know, we... Myself and my partner, we have always said, if someone walks in with $5 million, we sell the store. Like, yeah. <laughs> there's, there is that. Yeah. But We're we here to it, sell, well, and if somebody wants to buy the whole thing, he buys the whole thing. <laughs> exactly. But what would we do with that $5 million? We would open another store because we love it so yeah, much. Yeah, you open, so. just open a play space like uh, three blocks yeah, from like, there. Yeah, there if go. they say, hey, we're going to buy this. You can't open it up in Ottawa. I'm like, great. Toronto it is. Montreal, <laughs> like, we're, there's always going to be another city. We'll figure it out. Oh, right? Yeah, so. the NDA does not cover one specific city. <laughs> and this yeah, is fine. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just rem- remind the people uh, what you got going on there, the Red Dragon comics, cards, and games. Uh, where where can the people find you? How do we? Well, I'll put a link to the Discord, obviously, and then shop online. They go there. They how do you want to yep. meet these people? So the best way is always through our Discord. Uh, I was already hyping that up earlier. 
but it's a great community hub. You can just jump in. Uh, once you get a thousand people, which we have, we're actually searchable. So you just search for us. You go to Ottawa. There's only six different discords that are searchable in Ottawa, which makes it very easy to find. Uh, and then you can just click on the link, join in, and you can say, well, you know, I want to play Yu-Gi-Oh. Go to the Yu-Gi-Oh section. You want to play competitive 40k or casual 40k. Jump in, see the stuff, meet the people. Um, purchases online, uh, red dash red dash dragon ca. We can take care of everything there. If you have any requests, because we do custom dice, we do play mats, we do a whole bunch of different stuff. Again, through our Discord, you can contact myself, my uh, any of my staff, and just say, hey, this is what I'm looking for, and we'll try to like sort you out on whatever it is that you want. Uh, we get great shipping discounts. Uh, we also have a ton of used models. Um, so yeah, we, we really facilitate whatever you want to do. And if that's just, hey, I want somebody to talk to while I'm painting, we got you covered. All right, well, that that was it was great. And then maybe do you have a do you have one maybe one tip for a budding new store owner or somebody looking to start a store? Just one like words of wisdom or something. I think the biggest thing that I would say is always respect your community because it's a community that makes or breaks you, and treat them like family. You know, uh, well maybe not some people's families, but. <laughs> The people that have the good families, you want to treat them like that. But yeah, no, I think if you have a good community and you're open and honest with them, uh, they'll be open and honest with you. I think the biggest thing that I've learned is if you try to squeeze every customer and client that comes in for every single penny in five years, you're going to be burning more bridges. Whereas if you just say, hey, I'll take a 10 cent hit right now, but in five years, they're still shopping with you, you're way further ahead. So just trust them, be open, be honest, don't lie to them, and it'll come back. You know, I, good vibes go out, good vibes come back. Yeah, I've said this so many times. I can rip you off one time for $200, but I can also sell you the good thing for $50 20 times, and I'll make way more. <laughs> exactly.